This shows how rocketry teams can use a file included in the description to simulate compressible external flow and nozzle flow to understand how changes to the geometry affects drag, thrust, the temperature profile on the nozzle, shock location and strength, and other flow features. Users can easily make changes to the geometry through parametric CAD that is integrated into the simulation and can change the chamber pressure, atmospheric pressure, and free stream mock. Note that this is a multi-species simulation since it includes a species for exhaust gas and the air. Including both phases helps increase the accuracy of the thrust calculation. First I'll begin by loading the simulation. So I'll go to File, Load, and then select the number of cores I want to use on my machine. Uh, that'll speed up the computations. I can also change the type of licensing. So say if I want to use Power On Demand, I can come here and change that and change the POD key that I want to use. I'll switch back to uh, a floating licensing configuration and then uh, browse to the file that I want to use and then hit OK. Then I can import external geometry by coming in here, right clicking, selecting edit. Then if I come up to the top, I can right click on this, import, CAD model, and normally I'd recommend selecting a um, parasolid body. Now one thing to note about this geometry is that it's uh, defeatured. It doesn't have a lot of the nuts and bolts and a lot of the complex geometry that's just not really necessary. It primarily focuses on the external features that are going to be exposed to the flow and the nozzle. So next I'll come in and change the number of fins. Uh, and that is for the parametric uh, pre-built geometry. The next thing I want to do is try to move this geometry so that it kind of mimics the pre-built geometry that I have in here. So I'll control click the bodies that I've imported and then rotate this. And so um, it actually is pointing in the same direction as the geometry that I have built into this. So that's a good first step. So I'll click OK on that. So the next step is to get the, the geometry that's imported to move down to uh, this pre-built geometry. So to do that, I'm going to zoom into the base of the imported geometry and use a ruler tool to, to measure the distance between this base and a particular location and the exact same point on the pre-built geometry. And so when I do that, it's going to give me an output here in the output window of the change in X, change in Y, and change in Z. And so I can use that uh, by, again, selecting the same bodies that I've imported. And uh, when I now select uh, an option to transform it, uh, I'll have the values that I need to use for X, Y, and Z. Okay, then if I zoom in, I can see that this matches pretty well. Um, I have a transparency button up there that kind of helps me to, to visualize uh, whether or not it uh, matches up well. And then I'll select OK. Now we need to rotate the imported geometry so that the fins line up. Uh, keep in mind there's hotkeys like S for side, T for top, and F for front. Um, and there's also a way to align the, the view. So here we are, we're in perspective right now, but if I change this to parallel, I get a top-down view, which is going to help with this. So I'm going to control click all of the bodies, go to rotate, and as you can see, it's not rotating like we should be rotating. We're going to rotate this about the x-axis. So once I've done that, um, I can zoom in and see the original geometry versus the uh, pre-built geometry, and uh, I can change that rotation here. So that was just in a first initial guess, but technically uh, this value actually gets it 100% aligned. So once I have that aligned, I'll click OK. I'll need the new CAD operations that have moved the imported rocket that now populate the CAD tree to be moved by dragging and dropping them individually in chronological order above domain and body sketch because this will enable me to see the imported rocket along with the sketch used for the rocket in the simulation. Now I'll alter the sketch that was used for the rocket fuselage and try to get this matched up to the imported geometry. Now this view doesn't quite line up so I'm going to hit T on the keyboard and then zoom in. Now this view obviously just looks at the side of the imported rocket so I could come up and hit uh, the transparency button so I can see through it but I don't personally like the way that looks so I'm going to turn that off and then come over to the scene plot tab and under clip planes if I go to plane number six and enable that it'll cut open the geometry. Now I just need to click off of this particular plane so that it doesn't try to alter its location 
and then go back to the edit tab. And now once I'm in this, um, I can go in and start moving around these sketch points. Uh, now, when I zoom in, I can see that the first thing I'm going to want to do is remove this anchor point so that I can move this point downwards so that the lip of the pre-built geometry matches up with the imported geometry. And then I'll right click and apply an anchor point to that again so it doesn't move. Then I'll move this uh, top point up so that it matches with the uh, external part of the uh, geometry. And again, add an anchor point back to it so it just doesn't move. And I'll just kind of progressively go through this and move around the point so that it matches up with the uh, existing geometry. Now, as you can see, as I work towards the nose of the rocket, that moving this point, it's a little bit hard to see where it actually starts to curve. So if I turn on the, the mesh, which is essentially just the tessellation of this geometry, I can see exactly where that kind of curvature starts. So I move that point in that place, anchor it, and then continue on with my alterations. Now when I go back to the nozzle, you can see this geometry doesn't quite fit, so I'm just going to delete that curve and then start moving the points as, as needed. And I'll actually add a, uh, a new curve here so that uh, it, it matches as closely as possible to that imported geometry. And when you're done making changes, select OK. Keep in mind that we created new surfaces because when we deleted parts of the sketch and added some back, it created new surfaces. So we need to make sure that they're named appropriately because the naming convention feeds into the workflow. So as you can see here, we have Nozzle and Nozzle 2. So we need to make sure that we rename the throat aspect of the, the nozzle uh, to be nozzle 2 uh, and the upper section that we uh, created to be fed into just nozzle. To make sure that I'm selecting the surfaces of the pre-built geometry and not the imported geometry, I'm going to make sure that I'm showing only the pre-built geometry. So I'll right click this and select show only. So once I've done that, I can see that I only see that geometry. So now I can go into that throat, click the surface, and once I have that selected, I can right click and rename it and I just make sure that it's named nozzle 2, nozzle space 2 and uh, now I can see that uh, this is now fed into that um, correct surface. And if I right click in the white space I can bring back the uh, hidden bodies. Then I'll uh, start working on the sketch for the fin so that it aligns with the imported geometry. And I'll select OK when I'm done with that. Uh, after this, I'll work on the fin extrude so that the pre-built geometry matches the import. Once that's done, we'll change the leading edge of the fin. And then we'll change the trailing edge of the fin. And once you're done with that, you can take a look at your pre-built geometry and compare that to the imported, uh, just to make sure that everything lines up well. The geometry is ready to go at this point, so I'll go ahead and select Close 3D CAD. Now, to get the engine exhaust gas properties to match your specific engine, I'll come into Physics 1, Models, and uh, expand this out so that I can start altering the, the properties. Now, to determine what these properties are, you may want to use the NASA Chemical Equilibrium Code called CEA, which is Chemical Equilibrium with Applications. Now, to change the conditions for your simulation, you can scroll down to Tools and then Expand Parameters. And here you can see parameters for things like free stream altitude, which automatically adjusts the static temperature and static pressure of the free stream boundary. You also have free stream Mach and free stream temperature. Just keep in mind that you don't want to change the free stream velocity parameter because it derives its value from the free stream Mach value. And this is actually used in the initial conditions for the simulation. You also have the chamber total pressure and chamber total temperature. Now, before I run this, I'll need to develop a mesh for this since I've made changes to the geometry. So I'll come up to the little cube icon at the top and select that to begin meshing. 
All right, and I can see it's done meshing. It produced about 1.2 million cells. And uh, I'll go ahead and open up a few scenes to uh, see what we have. Uh, the first one is a CAD scene. There's uh, not really too much uh, that's different here compared to what we've already seen, so I'll move on to the next one, which is our mesh scene. Uh, and you can see what the uh, trim cells look like, the prismatic layers, and so on and so forth, all of the built-in refinements and so forth that's in there. Uh, and then I have my result scene. So I'll leave this open to see how the solution develops as it runs, and I'll click the little run icon up here to begin the run and switch back to the results scene. Now one thing to note is that this is computing in an inviscid solution in order to give it a better starting point so that it can reach a final solution faster and with better stability. Uh, this initialization is called grid sequencing initialization. After this, it will begin solving the fully viscous flow with turbulence. One thing to keep in mind is that you can open up your plots and watch them evolve as you watch your three-dimensional scenes evolve as well. Here's the finished simulation. Um, let's take a quick look through some of the plots. Uh, as you can see in here, we have cell count, drag of all external split up and together, mass flow, uh, things like thrust, and then also uh, pressure at different points in X along the nozzle. Keep in mind that plots like thrust, mass flow, and drag need to be multiplied in this case by four because we're only modeling a section of the domain. Let's take a quick look at some of the scenes and how they're built. For example, this mesh scene, you can see that there's multiple layers to it um, and you can turn them on and off uh, just by double clicking on them. So you can see this is showing the cell width and then there's other layers such as the mesh on the surface that we looked at. And then I can also turn on Wallway Plus. Now it's a little bit hard to see, so if you come up here and click that button, it turns off the uh, mesh. Uh, so I can see what the Wallway Plus values are. Now, uh, if I go on to the result scene um, and expand this out, you can see that there's a number of different layers to this. Uh, and again, if I toggle them on and off, you can kind of see what they look like. Keep in mind that if you want to make a change to your geometry, all you need to do is come back up here to Geometry, 3D CAD, edit whatever changes you need to make, and then once you're done, clear the solution, and then make a new mesh, and then select the Run button again. The same applies if you're changing boundary conditions, because keep in mind that we're using adaptive mesh refinement, meshing which refines certain areas of the domain based off of things like density gradient, so features like shock waves could be captured. 